This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. You guys may have noticed over the last month or so that the place looks a little bit different, and that's because we moved into a new facility. I kind of wanted to give you the tour of the new digs and also just show you around and let you know why I made that decision. My name is Brian Bartrett. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often takes me on animal adventures around the world. This week, I'll give you a tour of BHB's new headquarters. You're watching Snake Bites. 12 years ago when I bought this building, it was everything to me. I wanted to build the biggest and most awesome collection of reptiles in the world. And it was a daunting task to have a building this size, but I slowly started filling up the rooms, putting more racks in, putting more animals in. Again, that was my dream at that point, to have one of the largest collections of reptiles in the world. And over the last several years, my interest kind of shift from having as many animals as I could have to, to really wanting to work with uh, animals I really, really loved, giving them more attention, and really spending more time with the educational side of things, you know. I, I think that as I matured and grew, I realized that just having a lot of animals maybe wasn't even doing the animals a lot of justice, and it was time to, to kind of give back. I really enjoyed the fact that I could educate people and get people passionate about, you know, not only reptiles but all animals. So what I had said was BHB, the collection, needed 100% of my attention and of course the educational side needed 100% of my attention and there's just not 200% of me to go around. So I decided that the best choice of action was is to go back to a more modest collection, still a lot of animals, but in a situation where I could feel more in touch with the animals I worked with and feel like it was back to where it used to be, where it was really more about the animals and less about the business side of things. And then it would also free up a lot of my time so that I could spend more time producing shows, whether it was for the web or other media, or I could go out and educate people because really that is where my passion is. This is our baby gecko area. Now all these take-alongs here are basically the way that we're going to keep geckos when they first hatch till they're about 10 or 12 grams, something like that. You know, these guys right here. And then they'll eventually move up into these bigger cages like right here, like this really gorgeous bull bell. Take a look at that animal. Now with leopard geckos here at BHB, we always want to keep them individual when they're growing up. It's just a little bit less stress and a little bit less food competition. That way you don't have animals kind of falling to the wayside when others are thriving. So we always want to keep babies in take-alongs and then go to this size and then eventually if we're raising them up, we'll put them into the adult side, which is over there with 28 quarts and we'll keep four females and one male in a cage or usually we keep the male separate and just kind of cycle them through, but that's the baby gecko area. So this is one of our colubrid aisles here. So as you can see, the aisles aren't quite as long as the old building, but they're still long enough to keep us busy, that's for darn sure. And basically, you know, I still have the vast majority of the variety of animals I have, just things like these T-positive albino Nelson's milk snakes that I've always loved so much. So it wasn't like I really sold out of that many projects, but what I really did was kind of just downsize into some areas that, so I'm not producing as many numbers as I used to, you know, but I'm still, increasing in other areas you know like these are some of my new Mexican black kings that'll be ready probably late this coming up season to breed so I've got plenty of stuff that's still coming up I still work with a lot of animals a lot of people have said oh you downsize you getting out of the business the truth is it's far from that we have tons of stuff still and take a look at this tangerine albino hunter and milk snake now that one is crazy and some of the babies that he produced this year oh my god some of the nicest tangerine albinos i've ever seen and then these colubrids here are just prepping for hibernation we have a lot of colubrids and geckos and even blue tongue skinks that are about to go into the cooler for the next few months so uh, that's one of our colubrid aisles still full of snakes by far the hardest thing about downsizing to a smaller collection was the actual part of getting rid of animals it was really emotional to me to have to bag up and ship out animals that I had seen hatch and raised up and seen them produce their first babies. I knew it was the right decision. I knew it was right for me and what I wanted for the future, but seeing some of those animals leave was really heartbreaking. But with that said, I knew they were going to a place that, that was probably gonna give them even more attention than I was able to with a large collection. So that took a little bit of the sting out of it. 
The physical part of moving into my new building was 10 times harder than I ever expected. I knew we had a lot of animals, we had a lot of cages, we had a lot of equipment that was gonna need to be moved, but never in my wildest dreams did I expect it to be as hard as it was. It was day to night for at least five or six weeks. I mean, we'd wake up in the morning and we would move animals and racks all day long. It was by far the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. One of the things that made the move even more difficult is that we were dealing with live animals. We knew there was gonna be some stress to the actual move itself, but we wanted to make it as stress-free as we possibly could. So we decided to actually move the animals in the rack systems. It was a little bit of a gamble, but because because we were only moving about 10 minutes away, we knew it was probably less stress on the animals to be jostled around a little bit in the racks and then be right into position within, let's say, a half hour, 45 minutes, rather than having to pull the animals out, bag them, cup them, whatever it is, and really jostle them around a bunch and maybe be a day or two before they got back into their houses. So we decided to go with the rack system and we were fortunate we didn't have any losses whatsoever. So when we got this new building, the one thing that was interesting is there was a pretty big room that had a kind of low ceiling, which at first I thought was a little bit of a bummer because I'm so used to really big spaces with really high ceilings. But the truth is it's really come as an advantage, to be honest with you, because it's much easier to keep the temperature and the humidity really locked in. So I absolutely love this area. And of course, this is where I keep all my boas and pythons, like these Colombian rainbow boas. I still have my Brazilian rainbow boas. As a matter of fact, I even have my indigos here oh, like my girl Maya here just chilling out she's actually about ready to go into hibernation so and then on this side in a few aisles over are all my adult ball pythons still so we still have a lot of ball python stuff down um, in this area here just like this super enchy pinstripe ball python that's just absolutely gorgeous and we're just getting into the breeding season so again that's really fun um, yeah, just my rainbow boas here and and uh, some of my carpet pythons, even uh, my trusty old Sun Glow arabesque boa constrictor that's getting nice and big. And this is kind of almost a pet of mine because one of the areas I did really downsize a lot was boa constrictors. I only have a few boa constrictors now. And, uh, and it was really just because I had continually struggled with really having success breeding them. So I had to kind of decide to, to downsize there, but I kept a few of them that I really like. And of course I've got my Maclats pythons. Uh, and these are where I keep my blue tongue skinks too. These are my, my smaller ones over here that are just coming up to breeders. You know, these will get moved into bigger tanks uh, here in the next probably six months, maybe even four months or so. And then, of course, these are the adults here. Um, as a matter of fact, look at this beastie here. This is an unusual animal. This is actually kind of a bizarre pattern, Erie and Jaya. Now, I'm typically working with mainly northerns and easterns, but because this animal was so unusual, I got into this and I'm gonna mess with a few Irian Jaya's here or there. And I was even so lucky as to bring my gators, of course, and that was really cool. You guys have seen them here and there and I couldn't leave uh, in downsize. These are such cool animals and they're pets of mine. And I, uh, I so I, we were able to get these guys in here. And of course, the big snakes over here. Um, this is, let me show you really quick what we've been doing with Satan. We've talked about it a few times how she was in just a six foot cage and every time we moved her into something bigger, she'd bash her face and really mess up so uh, so now we got her in here in an eight foot cage eight foot by three and a half foot cage and uh, we just covered it up now we've done this before and she still smashed her face in but so far she's been down here for a while and although she's still mad and you can take a peek at her inside here you can see her face is still doing pretty good and uh, it isn't all scraped up there you go right I gotta keep this down because every time someone moves by it, she smashes her face and we just don't want her to hurt herself. But uh, again, we still have the big snakes here, so it's pretty fun. And of course, uh, ball pythons more down here. Uh, this whole aisle here is, is ball pythons. Just, you know, we really didn't move that many out. We downsized a few animals, but for the most part, we've got the majority of our ball pythons that we used to have. Um, you know, just all the same stuff that, that we've been working with for a long time. And, and again, going into the breeding season, we're super excited. And again, the fact that we can control the temperature and humidity much better in this room as compared to the other building, I am really excited to see what the outcome is going to be. There had been a lot of rumors about why I was downsizing. Some people thought it was because I was going out of business, I was in financial ruins. Other people said that all my animals were dying because we had some sickness about it. You know, it was, it was hard to see 
those rumors going around knowing the reason why I was downsizing. But the economics of the move had nothing to do with it, and certainly the health of my animals had nothing to do with it either. It was really about getting into a position that I was more comfortable in life, have more time to do other things, and, and certainly I think that now that we've been here for a while, uh, people have realized um, that you know we didn't have a problem with the collection we weren't going bankrupt I mean we were actually we had come off the best two years of our entire career actually it was uh, it was the right time financially to move because we had enough uh, to be able to afford to do it the right way and to make it the right way it was so um, I know that my whole life was about growing for 20 plus years and, and when I finally emotionally let that go and realized that I could have a smaller collection and be even uh, in a better position in life. It's, uh, once I emotionally accepted it, now that we're in this place, I tell you, I'm so happy. I mean, you know, at night, you know, everyone leaves at night, the crew, and, and I'm here for hours after, and, and oftentimes I don't want to leave. I mean, I love this new place. It's, uh, it's big enough to have a lot of really cool animals, but it's not so big that I've lost touch with what's going on here. I can actually get around and walk around and know every part of the collection every single day that I'm in town, which is something that was almost impossible to do with my other place, so I couldn't be more happy with this new environment. And of course, this is one of the baby aisles where we keep all the baby ball pythons. Uh, we had a pretty decent year with a lot of really neat stuff, so I'm always super excited to just kind of see what's hatching. And uh, we're, we're basically 100% done now, so everything is set up. Again, we're gearing up for production for next year. But again, we're having a good time down here because the humidity is about 10 to 15% higher with the lower ceiling, so we don't have nearly the shed issues that we used to have. We used to have to soak stuff all the time, spray stuff down, and things even like this uh, chocolate spinner are just really cool. I love the chocolate gene. It's a co-dominant gene and it, uh, it makes things just kind of really unusual looking. So, so we have some really cool stuff there. Um, you know, I'm just pulling snakes out here. You know, There's a bumblebee special. Uh, again, the special is something that makes crystals. As a matter of fact, we have over here, we have a super special, which is, uh, is, is the, the special to special. So if you breed a special to a, a Mojave or breed a special to a, a lesser, you'll get either crystals or lesser crystals. Well, this is a special to a special which is the super special and it's kind of a white snake with a little bit of patterning to it and again if you breed this to say a Mojave you're gonna get all um, specials and crystals and if you breed it to a super Mojave you'll get hundred percent crystal so it's a pretty cool mutation for sure and and uh, you know this is another one that's similar to this this is a super specter now the specter is the thing that makes the super stripe this is the super specter which looks really similar to a super stripe but it's actually got the double gene of specter so everything that comes out of this animal here will be a specter so again a super specter to a super uh, yellow belly or an ivory is going to produce all super stripes which is really cool but again there's the, uh, the the baby area here for the ball pythons at least and uh, it's cool like I said it's much more homey and it's definitely really cool so anyways guys that's the overview of what BHB looks like now the people that say that I'm gone and that I've downsized out you can see we still have tons of stuff I'm going to be part of the reptile hobby the rest of my life I love it so much and as always part of that reptile hobby on Facebook and then tweet my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at Snakebites TV and on Instagram at snakebites.tv. Till next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes every Thursday only on Animal Bites TV.